بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. Moving on to the twelfth juz of the Quran or the twelfth para, we have the last few verses of the previous surah and that was surah Yunus. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with surah Hud. Surah Hud was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in what is known as the year of sorrow or the year of grief in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lost his beloved wife Khadija radiallahu anha as well as his uncle who was supportive of him Abu Talib and as a result the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in a lot of grief and sorrow. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed Surah Hud to console the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Through mentioning several stories of the Prophets and Messengers before him, to console him and to tell him that, look, what you are going through with your people is no different than what the Prophets before you went through, but they were patient, and you also must be patient in order to see the fruits in the end and the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the end. And so this is how the story uh, the this is how Surah Hud begins by consoling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the stories of the Prophets, beginning with uh, beginning with Nuh alayhi salam. And so Nuh alayhi salam, uh, the story of Nuh alayhi salam is mentioned in quite some detail here in Surah Hud, more than any other place in the Quran. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the conversation that took place between Nuh and his people, and then how Allah commanded him to uh, build the ark because Allah was going to send the flood, and then you know uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his punishment came and wipe out, wiped out all these people and drown them and also the conversation that took place between Nuh alayhi salam and his son who did not believe and so his son thought that he could escape he said I will go on top of a mountain and I will escape the flood uh, but that did not happen and so he was drowned along with the disbelievers and so uh, Nuh alayhi salam he was very sad because he lost his son and he complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Oh Allah, you said that you would save me and my family, and my son is from my family. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to Nuh alayhi salam and told him, No, he was not from your family. And so true bonds, uh, true bonds are those of Iman, the bonds of Iman, and not the bonds uh, that tie us together through our blood relations. And so what this shows us, the lesson that we learn from this, is that the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than the love for anyone else. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the story of Hud, who, you know, this surah is named after. And uh, the story of Hud here, it basically highlights that seeking forgiveness, seeking forgiveness is a means of victory. Seeking forgiveness is a means of victory in all sense of the word. And so, uh, and so Hud alayhi salam uh, would tell his people, why do you not seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If you do so, Allah will grant you victory. Uh, and then Allah mentioned after that the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and the story of Lut alayhi salam and, and also the story of Thamud and Salih alayhi salam and then uh, the last story that Allah mentions is the story of Shu'aib and the story of Shu'aib basically shows us that uh, Islam uh, is not uh, you know a religion that uh, is to be practiced on an individual basis but rather uh, the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cover even uh, the economy and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentioned regarding the story of Shu'aib that his people 
would uh, you know disobey uh, the rules of, uh, of of honesty in trade and commerce, and so this was one of the reasons why uh, they perished and why they were destroyed. And towards the end of Surah Hud, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala further consoles the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and tells him that the only reason why we have mentioned these stories to you, linuthabita bihi fu'adak, so that your heart will become firm and steadfast. And so that is uh, the moral that we learn from the stories that Allah has uh, mentioned in the Quran, uh, especially for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in order to make him firm in front of uh, the mission that he is uh, that he is calling the people to. Uh, after that, we move on to the next surah, and that is Surah Yusuf. And Surah Yusuf is uh, basically uh, mentions the entire story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And there is no other uh, story in the Quran that is greater than the story of Yusuf. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to it in the very beginning of uh, this surah as the best of stories. The best of stories. Uh, and there is no other uh, story of any prophet in the Quran that is dedicated to an entire surah like this story of Yusuf in Surah Yusuf. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala basically uh, mentions uh, in, in Surah Yusuf from the very beginning uh, what happened with Yusuf alayhi salam and how uh, you know uh, due to his beauty and due to him being favored by his father uh, envy was cast into the hearts of his brothers and what this envy led to it led to them uh, you know abandoning him throwing him into the well uh, and then, you know, coming back to their father and lying about what took place. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us what happened with Yusuf alayhi uh, salam and how uh, he was taken uh, by a caravan and then he was sold uh, as a slave and the trials that Yusuf alayhi salam went through. And so, uh, you know, uh, he was uh, in isolation uh, as a young boy, away from his father and mother, uh, in a foreign land, a slave, a captive. And uh, not only that, but, uh, you know, the trial that he went through after that, when he became a teenager and, uh, you know, the woman, uh, the, the wife of the Aziz of Egypt, the, the, the ruler of Egypt, how she tried to seduce Yusuf alayhi salam. And then how that eventually led to another trial, and that was the trial of imprisonment. And so Yusuf alayhi salam went through trial after trial. And the whole purpose of you know, Allah mentioning this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam is that look, what you are going through of trials and uh, you know, afflictions with your people uh, it is no different than what Yusuf alayhi salam went through. However, Yusuf alayhi salam was patient and steadfast. And let us also not forget that, you know, this was not only the case with Yusuf alayhi salam, but also his father, Yaqub, who went through another trial. And that was the trial of losing his beloved son. And so he was patient. And he mentions this later on in the surah. And so what we learn from uh, the story of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, at least this portion of the juz, the first part of the story, is that uh, sincerity, it eventually leads a person away from doing evil deeds. And so a person's iman and his ikhlas leads him away from immorality, from indecent acts, from fahisha, from zina. And so Yusuf alayhi salam, it was his iman and his ikhlas that basically prevented him from falling into the seduction of the woman. Uh, also, uh, another lesson that we learn here is that Yusuf alayhi salam, he did not stop giving da'wah uh, even when he was in prison. And so when he was in prison, 
and his prison mates asked him about uh, the interpretation of the dreams that they had. He didn't give them the interpretation right away, but rather he called them to the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. And so he was very, very concerned with giving da'wah uh, and calling the people to the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with that, we come to the end of this juz. Uh, it is in the middle of Surah Yusuf. Insha'Allah ta'ala, in the next session, we will move on to complete the Surah and uh, what follows it uh, in the next juz. Bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Until then, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.